this is Anna at ArtReach, and I am going to do an acrylic painting to be a color wheel, but also a daisy. Having a color wheel is really helpful to be able to remember which colors are opposite of each other um, and just to kind of have that, that reference of how your colors work. It's also a really good thing to make when you have a new set of paints so that you can kind of learn how to combine them and create all of the different uh, variations that you want with your different paint colors. Um, because every type of paint is gonna be a little bit different and you know, yellow and blue always make green, but sometimes depending on the paint, you might need a little more yellow than the, you know, than another type. Um, so it's good to kind of get familiar with the materials that you have. Okay, so here's what we are going to use today. I have an 11 by 14 canvas. This is just a pretty basic canvas. Um, some acrylic paint. I have a cool red. Um, if you have a warm toned red, it won't really work to make like the purples. So it needs to be a cool toned red, a blue and a yellow. I'm also gonna use some black and white later on. Then I have a large, this is a three quarter inch wash brush, flat brush that I use to fill in a lot of big spaces. I have a size 10 flat brush. So flat brushes are flat. Um, this is the ferrule, um, that metal piece that holds the bristles on, it's flat at that end. I also have a size five round brush. As you could expect, that ferrule is round in that um, where the bristles connect on that paintbrush. And then I've got some paper towels, a cup of rinse water, a plastic cup that I'm gonna use um, as a circle template. And for mixing my colors, you can use your paintbrush to mix colors, but if you're mixing a lot, you tend to get paint up in that ferrule and that's really not good for your paintbrush. So if you have a palette knife, which is um, a metal little scraper tool that you can use to mix your paint, that's great. If you don't have one, a plastic knife or a spoon, something like that will work as well. I even use the back end of brushes. <clears throat> Okay, so since we are going to make our uh, color wheel into a flower, I'm gonna start by tracing the center of my flower. So in those other two versions of this painting, we have the flower a little bit off center. This one is quite a bit off center. It's really close to the edge. Since I wanna use this as a color wheel, I want that to be a little bit closer towards the middle, but I don't like things to be dead center. It's just kind of boring visually. Um, not Doesn't make as compelling a composition as when it's um, a little bit off. So I'm gonna put mine, we'll go with here. And I am tracing with a Sharpie so that you can see it. Otherwise, when I use a pencil or something like that um, with the camera, it doesn't really show up that well. But you can use a pencil. The warning I will give you with using a pencil on canvas is it doesn't really erase. Um, the benefit of using a pencil instead of a Sharpie is just that it's lighter, so it's easier to cover over with paint. But you can't really erase off of a canvas very well. You can try, usually it doesn't work. Okay, so I like to do my color wheels with um, 12 colors. So I'm gonna grab a scrap of paper so I can write it out for you. Okay. 
I do red, yellow, blue, and then between red and blue, there's purple. Um, between blue and yellow, there's green. Between red and yellow, there's orange. So that gives us our six colors, our three primary and three secondary colors. I like to make an extra color in between each of those. So that's gonna give us 12 colors total. Okay, so I'm going to mark those out on here and make petals. So I'm gonna do six big petal shapes. So I did one on the top, one on the bottom. I'm gonna do one here, one here. These are going off the edge a little, that's okay. So I have six basic petals and then I'm gonna add six more petals kind of behind in between those. So that gives me 12 petals total. All right. To have your color wheel line up right, it is helpful to make yourself a little diagram like this. Um, because I don't really paint as I go, I like to get those primary colors in first and then go back and add the secondary and the tertiary, the third level of color. I am gonna start with my red, my red magenta. So if you have a printer that uses CMYK ink, that is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Cyan is a shade of blue or a variation of blue. Magenta is a variation of red. You have to have that cool red like magenta in order to get all of your other colors of the rainbow or the spectrum. Okay, so I painted my red. Now I've got paint all over my brush. I'm gonna wipe it off first. I'm gonna wipe that extra off on my paper towel and then swish my brush in my water and I'm kind of lightly painting the bottom of the container and that is helping to scrub that paint out of my brush. I'm not mashing it really hard. I'm just lightly rubbing the bottom of the container with the brush, wipe off the extra on the edge. And then I wanna wipe my brush on my paper towel. That's still pink. That means I didn't get all the paint off my brush. So I'm gonna put it back in, wash it again. I wanna be able to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and have it be clear. No pigmentation left on there. That's how I know my brush is clean. Making sure to clean your brushes out and clean them out right away will definitely extend the life of those brushes. Okay, so I'm gonna skip a big petal, go to my next big petal, and I'll do blue. You can really go in any direction. You could have um, yellow next if you wanted. So I am taking my swipe of paint and doing that outside edge of my petal and then filling in. Because that outside edge is where I wanna be careful with the paint, right? Stay within the lines. But on the inside, 
I can be a little bit faster and just fill it in quickly. Just like before, I'm gonna wipe off that extra paint. The less paint I stick into my paint water, the better my paint water will work to actually wash my brush off. All right, washed off clear onto my paper towel. Same thing, I'm gonna skip a petal and go fill this one in with yellow. When you are painting on a canvas, your canvas has a texture to it. So you have to kind of rub your brush back and forth a little bit to kind of scrub the paint into all of those little nooks and crannies of that canvas. But even as I'm doing that, my paint is only on the bristles of my brush. It's not in that ferrule, that metal part. Once paint is up inside that metal part, it's a lot harder to get it out. So it's better to just not get it in there, in there bleh, not get it in there in the first place. Okay, rinsed my brush off. So now, so these are our primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Our secondary colors are the colors that we make with primary colors. Okay, so if I mix, and this is where I like to use the back end of my paintbrush or a plastic knife or spoon. If I take a little bit of my blue, smoosh that over there, wipe my little plastic knife off, and I take a little scoop of my red, be a little more, and I mix those together. I'm going to get purple. My yellow paint's a little runny, so I can't lift my plate up to show you all that well. Okay, so I made my purple paint. And I'm gonna paint that big petal in between my red and my blue. All right, wipe that off, wash it up. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my blue and my yellow. To make myself some green. So acrylic paint is what I'm using right now. Acrylic is basically like a type of plastic. It is washable with water and you can thin it with water, but it doesn't always thin really nicely. It doesn't always um, maintain the same level of pigmentation. So if you're gonna thin your acrylic paint, there are special thinners that you can get, um, some thinning mediums that will thin it out, but also maintain the integrity of those colors for you. but it is washable off of like brushes and things like that. Doesn't really wash out of clothes. So it's water soluble in that you can clean up brushes, you can wash it off your hands, but it doesn't really come off clothing. So make sure you wear an apron or something that you don't mind um, having a little bit painted. All 
All right, I am moving on and doing my orange. So canvases now that you buy in the store come pre-gessoed. So gesso is basically like primer. It is painted onto the surface of the canvas. I'm extending my paint around the edges of my canvas. Uh, so gesso is like a layer of primer that is put onto that canvas and it helps to fill in some of those little textured bumps in the canvas, um, but not all of them. It mostly makes it so it's not as absorbent. So your paint doesn't just soak right into the canvas. Okay. So I've got my primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and I've got my secondary colors, purple, green, and orange. Now I'm going to make my tertiary tertiary means third, basically, um, or intermediate colors, which are the colors that are formed in between there. Most of these, we don't really have, consistent names for in English. Um, turquoise is kind of the exception, but like over here, we're going to have a yellow orange. So it's kind of halfway between orange and yellow. Typically these are named with the primary color first. So yellow, orange, not orange, yellow. But if you have more orange than yellow in it, sometimes it will have a different name like that. But these are the colors that end up with all sorts of fun names like Mandarin or Clementine, um, Sunset, <laughs> names that are not uh, as universally accepted as red, yellow, and blue. I'm going to keep going around. So I am mixing in. I'm taking where I mixed some of my, like with my green, I'm taking where I have some green mixed and kind of pulling that off to the side a little bit and working a little bit more yellow into it for this so that I'm getting that yellow green. And it's really not taking a lot of paint to cover this canvas. A mistake that I see people make a lot when they get their paint out themselves instead of having me do it for them is that they take a ton of paint or when they're mixing colors, they're mixing a huge like spoonful size scoop of red and yellow each to make orange. I don't have that much paint on my plate and I'm covering a canvas with it. So um, it will help you kind of extend the life of your, or the, the quantities of your paint if you are not slathering it on and not wasting a ton on your palette. Here at ArtReach, a lot of times we use paper plates as palettes because at the end of a class, especially if I have a large class, um, it's nice to just be able to toss them. There are plastic palettes like this that you can get. I don't typically use these because it keeps the colors really separate and I like to be able to mix my colors. You see my plate? It's a mix. Um, what I use at home is actually um, a plastic clipboard that when the paint dries on it, I can just kind of scrape it off with a palette knife um, and peel it all off, throw it in the garbage and start over. Or I could rinse it off, but to be honest, I just let it dry on there and peel it off later. All right, so I'm working my way around. I've got my blue green or kind of a turquoise color. That's one of the few that we kind of have an agreed upon name for typically of those tertiary colors. Just 
just continue working my way around and mixing these in between colors. If you get something like this and you think, oh, that's a little more blue than I wanted, I want some more purple in it, you can just kind of paint over. The nice, th one of the nice things with acrylic paint is you can layer it really well. It typically covers, um, if you're trying to cover something like a dark tone um, with something that's light, it's gonna take a lot of coats of that. Um, typically it works better to take, um, like if you were trying to cover something red or purple with yellow, to cover that area with white instead and let that dry and then go put that yellow on top of there. Um, just so that you are kind of getting back to a neutral state. So the important thing with a color wheel or why it's nice to have one is to keep track of your colors that are opposite. So colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel are what we call complementary colors. And basically they kind of neutralize each other or amplify each other depending on the context. So if I have some blue paint and it's really bright and I wanna to tone it down, I wanna make it more neutral, um, I would add a little bit of orange and it kind of mutes it, makes it a more brown tone. Um, if you mix orange and blue in you know, fairly even quantities, you're gonna get brown. If you mix purple and yellow, you get brown. If you mix red and green, you get brown. Um, but if you add just a touch of that complementary color, that color that's the opposite on the color wheel, it tones it down because it's basically adding like a tiny, tiny bit of brown to that color. So it can kind of help you when you have a color wheel, it can help you to be able to look at that and see you know, how you wanna do um, different color pairings with that. Plus in this case with um, the little rainbow flower, it's just kind of pretty. In my art studio at home, I made a clock that is a color wheel. So I took a clock from uh, the thrift store and took out a round clock, took out the backing piece and painted a color wheel onto it. And this color wheel of 12 is perfect for something like that because you've got 12 numbers. All right, so here's my basic rainbow flower. Now, if you're just leaving it as a color wheel, you can leave it like this. If you're wanting to add some more petals, you could add a few more in there, kind of wherever they fit with whatever color scheme you're doing. Um, because I'm leaving mine as a color wheel, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Although, I do wanna kind of fatten up this petal a little bit. It'll look too skinny. We don't want that. All right, so now I can paint a background to go around this. Typically, with um, acrylic painting, I start with the background first and get that all filled in. In this case, because I'm really doing this to show you the color wheel, I'm kind of doing things a little bit backwards. But if I was doing a painting of, you know, a scene where I have, um, say, mountains in the background and trees in the front, I'm going to paint the sky, then I'm going to paint the mountains, then I'm going to paint the trees and kind of work my way forward. So I work in kind of the opposite direction of the, the way that you're seeing it. So whatever's in the foreground is painted last. The further back it is, um, the sooner I paint that. I will paint that part first. And that's a really common mistake that I see um, people do is if you wanted to paint 
um, a picture of a pumpkin. You start with the pumpkin, you'd think, right? Because it's a picture of a pumpkin. But it's actually better if we start with that background. so that our pumpkin can layer over the top of it. In this case, also because my background, I'm doing black, um, my background can cover over anything pretty easily. So I am carefully, with that smaller brush, kind of medium-sized brush, I guess I would say, I'm going around these petals. So this brush width of paint that I'm putting on here is kind of giving me a barrier between my flower petals that I don't want to get painted black and the rest of the big open space of my canvas. This is a good painting for practicing those skills and for playing with your color theory. Often when we paint color wheels, we will also do our shades and tints of those colors. So a tint is a color plus white. So pink is a tint of red. It's red with white added to it. Um, and that can be really helpful to do so that you can see what the lighter version of all these colors is. Um, these types of things of, you know, what's a lighter version of orange look like? What does a, a lighter version of this yellow look like? Um, those things can seem kind of obvious, but when you, um, are looking at trying to match a color, it can be really helpful to have that color wheel and have had that experience of mixing those colors so you already kind of know where you're going. And then a shade is a color plus black. So typically it's a darker version of that color, but it's not just a darker version. It has different properties, different qualities to it. So that can be really helpful to do as a kind of a learning exercise and then also just to have a copy of in your art studio so that as you are painting more, you have it as a reference. You can certainly buy color wheels, but I really like to have them. Um, I like to have my students make them because I think that's a really good experience of learning where the colors come from, how you can make them. Okay, so now that I have that kind of barrier of black, now I can use this big wash brush and I can just go ahead and fill the rest of this in really quickly. So like I said at the beginning, you kind of have to scrub a little bit to get your paint into all of those little nooks and crannies of the canvas. You could paint a different color background on here. I'm doing black because I think it makes the colors stand out the best, um, but certainly it is up to you. And I'm doing this quickly so that we can get through this and on to the next step. But you can certainly take your time. Um, it would probably be good to do a whole second coat on here, but in the interest of your time, we're gonna skip ahead. 
All right, so now to um, add a little bit of interest to the flower, I am going to do some white, almost like highlights that will kind of make those variations that you would see on a petal. Okay. So this white is a block out white, which means that it has like a little bit of that primer in it. And this is a round brush. So with a round brush, the harder you push, the fatter your line is. Um, so if I push really hard, I'm going to get a fatter line. If I am back further, my line is going to be thinner. I push down and kind of flick my wrist so that the brush is sort of lifting up off the canvas and it will make those lines get skinnier as they go. And I just leave those as streaks. I like that sort of graphic look instead of trying to blend things. And in this case, I'm also kind of going over those black lines that I did with the Sharpie so that those aren't as noticeable. So if you had um, areas where your colors kind of overlapped a little bit, you can kind of cover it over with this at this point. And then I'm gonna do some little little bits through the center of the petals. Okay, and then just to clean up this inside line, I'm going to take my brush with some black paint. I'm using that round brush still. I'm going over that line. Got a little bit of white in it, but that's okay. 